Hello. Mal here. Live. This is, um, for anyone watching this in the future, I'm doing a live stream during the campaign of Power Vacuum to do some of the artwork for some of the cards because I have a lot of them to do. And I thought, well, I might as well just do it live and then I can talk to you. The chit chat, Q and A. I can ramble about my process as I draw and then redraw and then redraw lines over and over again. Hello, Marcus. Yes, we are live. Um, I tested this earlier today, by the way. I did an Itchy Feet art stream. I do a weekly webcomic called Itchy Feet. And so I did it. I tested it this morning. It's my first time doing an art stream. And it went really well. It was really nice. And so I might do these more often. I would like to, because why not? Here we are in the digital world. All right. Um, I've also invited the designer of Power Vacuum, Caleb, to come join me at some point. And I sent him a link. I don't know how to have guests in this program, but I'm sure it will be fine. All right. So um, I'm using an iPad Pro and Procreate. Um, with my little pencil here, you're gonna see here is my uh, here's my screen, and it's gonna look a little weird for you, but it doesn't look weird for me, and that's what's important. All right. Um, so what I can have use your help deciding is uh, one, which of the cards I'm gonna do um, during the stream. I've done a bunch of sketches, and here are a few of them. These aren't all the sketches I've done for all the cards. There's quite a few cards remaining that I still have to draw, but um, there's this one that's a stakeout. This is one of the spy cards. Um, there is the flyers. This was based on an idea that um, somebody put in the card art list. I put uh, a spreadsheet. You, there's a link to it on the campaign page where you can see all of the um, where you can add your own ideas for what the different cards should be. And so many great ideas. And I've already been really inspired by a bunch of them. This is this was one of them, a printer printing out um, pamphlets, leaflets, media. This is um, this suit looks like a spy suit. The old the spies used to be white, now they're black, uh, and now white is the media suit. This background, the number and the aren't isn't going to be the final card. It's just a frame to get me. Um, a sort of reference of like where the objects are going to be for when I do the do the actual artwork. So this isn't the spy card. This is a media card. Um, state surveillance. That's what we have there. Um, those friendly fellows. Oops, don't want that. And uh, all right, someone needs to tell me the pun in this one because I was asking my wife, who's Italian. And she did not know the pun. I guess it does not translate across languages as well. So this is a fine. This is a money suit. The yellow cards are, are money or finance. Somebody's got a right in the comments. Um, what is the pun here? Anyone? Hmm. Maybe it's a bit too obtuse then. <laughs> Um, we'll come back to that one. He's a toaster oven, right? He got it. Sam got it. Here we go. Cooking the books. Come on. That's an easy one. Whew. Hey, Caleb. Caleb. All right. How... Did you follow the link, Caleb? How do I get you in here? should be able to just pop in. There's room, there's room right here for you. But maybe there was a link in the thing I sent you. I don't see, I sent, all I see here is invite and there should be a list. I did, I sent it to you in WhatsApp. Uh, I'm going to resend it. Oh, yes, because then we got distracted in our conversation. Well, that's an exciting look behind the curtain of the 
process of me and uh, me and Caleb. Oh, there he is. All right, I add you in. Uh, hey, hey, Caleb. We well, shaved. Look at you. <laughs> yes, I did. I did. Nice. You look even handsomer, beardless. <laughs> Thank, um, you. Thank you. I know you got a couple minutes today. You're not going to stick with us the whole time. Um, I have a test for you, and that is, what is the pun in this card? Oh, great. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> so it, the the one that I'm seeing right now. Yeah. Well, I, I, I can cheat because uh, I, I heard you say it before when I had logged in to uh, I YouTube. Said that. So. <laughs> <laughs> is it cooking the books? No, <laughs> it's baking the graphs. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> yes, cooking the books. Oh, man, I love it. I love it. This one's tougher. What's the, what is the pun in this one? Again, this comes from the card list. This was an idea that somebody uh, had in the card list. This is this is this is awesome. I love it. Uh, is your refrigerator running? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's <great>. running. <laughs> All right, Caleb, you can help me decide which of these cards I'm going to draw on the stream. Now we've I've done enough chit chatting. Uh, Kainga, Eric got it. Kainga Games, the fridge is running. There you go. Um, I, I, okay, do you think this one should the fridge door should be slightly open and there should be like fruit falling out? This was an idea that I I thought like when we ah. I, I like that idea. Yeah, yeah. No, totally. Um, yeah, what could be falling out of there? Um, milk. <laughs> <laughs> milk. Last week's potato salad. Yeah, um, Soviet milk. <laughs> no, no, yeah, I love that. A little bit more disheveled, maybe? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I right. mean, it might be a little harder to tell if it's a fridge, though. I mean, the door is it's a great giveaway there. Um, well, I was thinking the door would be, like, slightly cracked. And then there'd be like stuff falling out onto the ground, like underneath them. Ah, yeah, maybe like a broken egg on the ground or something. Ah, uh, broken eggs, that's good. Yeah, yeah, maybe yeah, like yeah. Food, foods like falling out as these. <laughs> <running>. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, these yeah. are coming together so well. I'm so so stoked. Yeah, um, super exciting. Yeah, Sam. So, Sam suggested a, a banana peel. That's a good idea. Oh yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Um, yeah, you could have the guy in the background like slipping a little bit, even <laughs> like on the, up in the banana peel or something. That's a good uh, idea. Uh, so, have you how how many of these have you shown? I since I just jumped in, I know you probably you've been on here for about seven minutes already. But um, uh, did you did you show the one that we were laughing about the other day? No, I'm saving that one. This is still my favorite. Okay, okay. I'm saving this one until it's finished. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to give that one away. I'm going to wait till people it's get the best it in, one. in it's their the games. One. It is by far the best one. Yeah. Um, so I, I just couldn't. I can't stop. I'm still laughing about it now. Yeah. No. Sorry, yeah, so no. there's uh, one. Well, I picked one of each of the like sketches for one of each of the of the suits. There's this one for for violence, the fridge running. There's the cooking the books. There is the this one you've seen. I edited a little bit so the one guy's like kind of kicking him in the head. Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> the, the security the cameras details are amazing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, this one is handing out pamphlets. Like this is the, for the media. Excellent. Oh, like, wow. <laughs> yeah, totally. It's like printing them out. Oh, that's great. <laughs> um, oh, man. Who? And then there's the stakeout one, which you've seen. Yeah, yeah. Killer. Killer. Which one should I do? So folks, so folks are, so I get to pick or are yeah, folks going to pick. vote? Or are they going to? I get to pick. Ooh. Mm. This is tough because, uh, I mean, if you do the fridge open, that's not something you're going to do on the fly. I, mean, I take it. Um, you probably want to just work I could, I guess. Yeah, I could probably wouldn't. But it may um, not. I mean, I get to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Um, man, I don't know. I, I, I love the stakeout. Uh, I love the surveillance. It's got a, it's, right now. It's a toss up between those two for me. Um, All right, the first person to shout out stakeout or surveillance. That'll be, I'll do that one. Yeah. Cool. What do we got? I can't see the. Um, oh wait, no, I can see the comments. There we go. <laughs> this is all new to me. All right, Marcus said surveillance. It's the one we're gonna do. All right. Sweet. What do you? You got a game night plan? What are you playing? Yes, I do. Actually, if you hold on one second, I will be right, right back. I have something to show everybody. One moment. Oh, nice. 
All right, I'm starting. I have the, um, I also have to check the line width because I often get the, like I had, you know, you can make the brush different sizes. And so I also, I want them to be consistent across the cards. So I often have to go back and check from old cards. Um, this is my sketch layer. Yeah, what's up? All right. Yeah. Well, excitingly enough, we are going to take it for a spin. Oh, yeah, poor vacuum. This is the review <laughs> copy, but it's, uh, but yeah, no, I'm very, very excited. We've uh, got a good group, the three of us here, uh, Adam, Aleph, and myself, and we're going nice. give to it a, give it a whirl. And uh, then we've got a couple other games on 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 queue as well uh we're gonna check out heat and potentially legends of uh is it legends of arnak or the i always forget the name arnak uh, but the, yeah whatever it is yeah adventures so, adventures of in, adventures in of arnak, arnak. Yeah. what is Ar what is the arnak arnak what? i guess is like the the distant the, the distant land or whatever that you're you're venturing into but um but yeah, it's a, it's it's a it's a good one. Um, we finally flipped over the board and tried the the snake temple, and uh, makes the game way way better. Yeah, for sure. Is it better? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's there's like it's harder to move up the levels on the um, the research track. It's mm -hmm. uh yeah, it's a little bit trickier, and so it, it makes it less like you don't want to just go that route and win. I always feel like that's the easiest way to win in that game, but it makes it a little bit more difficult that you got to do a little bit more exploring. So I see. Well, oh man. So I, I love watching your process. I've been, I've been thinking about this now that I really wanted to actually sit down with you and talk to you more about the, the art because uh, the sketches look great. Are you, what, what, what is like your go-to pencil for uh, procreate like the, for sketching? um i so i have this hb pencil which i don't know if this is from the basic set and then i edited it i'm not sure i, I don't think so so i have this group this the pack called matt sketching which is pretty good and then there's maybe it's just oh yeah it's just the hb pencil that comes in the in sketching in the ah okay cool the basic set and then i've edited a little bit because you can edit them to make them a bit bigger which i've done Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, that's the that's the sketch one, and then the ink one is that one is one of the ones downloaded from from someone else, and then I I edited it slightly as well. I wanted to give it a little bit of a tooth, so the so the the drawing edge. You can see the lines here aren't like perfectly. Ah, um, cool, cool. Straight. That way, it gives it a little bit of like a bit mm -hmm. more of an analog feeling. Um, oh man, I I love Procreate. It's like it's a dream come true. I've been, yeah, I've been using it for a while, but I'm always like learning new little tricks for it. And uh, um, yeah, it's yeah, great. I got to the point where I can pretty much rely on a, a couple, a couple brushes and a couple like techniques and that'll get me as far as I need to go. Um, have it. you, I, I know that you've used uh, affinity for like some design stuff. Have you ever checked out their uh, affinity designer for iPad, like the um, vector drawing? I have not. I, it's on my list, my list of things to do. I, I've heard it's pretty good. Is it not yeah, good? Yeah, yeah. Tried it. But it's it's. I mean, the the hard part I think is that Procreate has just completely nailed the user interface, right? I mean, right. I find myself now in almost every iPad program that I use doing like a two finger undo. <laughs> like yeah. it's it's it really so bothers me when like, they don't have it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, I, you know, how is this not? They they've sort of created this standard now, and I think there's like a couple other apps that use that, but it's, uh, yeah. I mean, the the, the the how user friendly Procreate is makes it so incredibly difficult to switch. I just wish that Procreate would make a a vector uh, program because then you can get the scalable graphics but i mean obviously this this works for for um what we're doing you know yeah, yeah totally but yeah um, i end up drawing things just really really large like on really large canvases and then um this these lines feel thick to me at least <laughs> <laughs> yeah do you have it on on procreate there where you have like the little saved notch yeah, I always yeah, yeah you can't see them here like... but i do have them on the notches mm -hmm. uh Sir Spinner is saying maybe a dog is peeing at the bottom of the pool. Maybe. Yeah. Hey. Do animals exist in this world? I don't think I have any. Well, what would be 
this is a great question for the audience is what what would be the animal appliance like what what do you imagine what is the what's the dog equivalent dog? yeah that's a I don't know. Yeah, we'll have to throw that out to the the audience here. I have no idea. I'm like a leaky something leaking, right? Like a... <laughs> yeah, totally. So what what is what is it in like a longer shape that maybe has like little stand legs on it? You know, I'm trying to think of like it could be. Well, not not like a just. I was right. These lines are too kitchen. thick. I used the wrong thickness. Crap. All right. Well. Well. Here we go. <laughs> check, this should be this should be the right one. It's the middle. It's the I've got the little. Anyway, oh, so you've I, got multiple lines on there. Yeah. I've got multiple lines on the thing, and I picked the big one. Yeah. I knew it was wrong. Back to I'm going to start on a different strong. part of the drawing, so I don't have to do the same part I've already done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah. What would it? What would an animal be? Um, I'm just trying to think. It's got to have like like a little bit higher legs. Like Eric says, a boom a, mic. Why a boom mic? A boom mic? That's not an appliance, Eric. Come on. That's. <laughs> I mean, it's it's a, a microphone. Is a. I, I, I don't know. I mean, you do have in the picture below us a a light and a megaphone and a camera. Um, but. Um, yeah, I was thinking. Also, on my list of to do is like a. Um, ah, true. It is fuzzy. He's saying the boom mic. <laughs> ah, like a dead cat. Yeah. That's what. Mm -hmm. So the. In film terms, the dead cat is the um, it's like this big fluffy thing you put on the end of a mic when you're outdoors, and it's like a little bit breezy, so that it. But no one's gonna know that's a, what that is, right? It just yeah, yeah, like, true. true. Out of context, it just looks like a stuffed animal. Yeah, true, true. Cool. So, uh, all right. Well, uh, thanks for dropping by. Yeah, absolutely, man. I am. I'm just astounded with this this artwork. It is so so cool. I can't wait to see. It. And so, like, yeah, we're it's we're gonna have unique cards for everything, right? Is that the is that the deal? Am I am I promising? That's the deal. 40, yeah, <laughs> 40, 40 unique cards. Um, I did. I think it was thirteen of them before the game. Like for the prototype that was out. That's out on the on the page and in the videos. And now I've got another. Um, I think like. Yeah, whatever the 13 minus 40 is, um, 27, um, left to do. Uh, and yep, just got to power through them. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Caleb is going to be here next week in my home. And we're mm -hmm. going to play some, we're going to try and set up a live stream where we're actually going to play Power Vacuum. We have some new rules. So we haven't mentioned this yet in the campaign. But um, mm -hmm. we have twisted, we have tweaked the rules slightly. Um, so most of the video, all the videos you've seen so far have rule or have like the old rule set. And now there's a, just, it's not a, not a completely new rule set, but there are some slightly new rules. We want to show you how that works and it's way, way better. Um, and we, yes, so Caleb's going to come down with Eric, uh, my brother, who Kainga games in the, in the stream, who, um, yeah, we can play some Power Vacuum and uh, do some chatting. It'll be fun. Yeah. So yeah. Later. Absolutely. Um, oh, this is <laughs> that's a good one. A Roomba. <laughs> like a, a like a, a little Roomba as a dog could work. <laughs> Roombas could be the dogs of this universe. Yeah, yeah I totally. we I talked to I talked to my robot vacuum for sure. Yeah, totally. Cool. Well, uh, best of luck with the inking, and uh, yeah, thanks for having me. And I will see you next week, Mal. And uh, yeah, cool, man, power vacuum. All right. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Killer, All right. See ya. Killer. All right. Finally, I thought he'd never leave. <laughs> uh, Caleb's great. Uh, all right, so now I can actually talk a little bit about my drawing. Roomba's not a bad idea. So um, yeah, I apologize if this zooming in and out is a little bit like, whoa, like nauseating. Let me know, I'll slow it down if I do. This is just how I like instinctively do it. Um, but it's really useful for me because the size, when you draw, here's a neat drawing tip. I gave this one this morning for anyone who's already seen it. When you draw, you don't really want to be drawing with your fingers because you don't have much range. And this is why people, when they draw this off, they, you know, they're often, when they're starting out, they draw a lot of little like lines in a, in a row like that, you know? Um, hang on one sec.
sorry, someone at the door. Um, it's why they're doing lots of like little lines across. And if you do, uh, if you draw with your wrist, it's still not great. You don't have a lot of range of motion with your elbows. What you really want to try to do is draw with your whole shoulder. Like that's ideal because then you have the most range of motion in a single line and you can really cover a lot of distance. But in order for that to work, you have to have a big distance to draw on. So that's why I'm always like zooming my um, art way in so that I can do these lines that are otherwise on a really small, you know, if I, if I was to try and draw this really tiny, you know, the lines would kind of look, kind of look crap. So, but if I zoom in way, way in, I can really get in there and draw a really nice, um, uh, like get really nice, clean, clean lines there. So yeah, I apologize if the zooming in and out is a bit is a bit much. Let me know if it's too much. And I will tone it down. All right. No, that's not what I wanted. It looks like a fish. What the heck? This is supposed to be like a collar of a like security person. I look right. I suppose so. Uh, Sir Spinner asks, "What can you tell us about the new rules?" Hmm. Um, well, no big surprises. So there's a couple of things that um, it's normal for a game to go to Kickstarter and um, not be 100% done. Um, the rule sets often get tweaked. There's often suggestions. I especially like to wait because I like to see suggestions from backers. I like to see like what are the what are some things that you come up with, um, ideas that you might have that might impact the gameplay. So I don't like to like finish the game completely. Part of the fun of, of crowdfunding, part of the appeal to me is the interactive process. So I like to bring a game that's like 90%, 95% done in terms of its design with room to be flexible for when it shifts and changes. And when other people play it, what other people, how other people react to it. And uh, so Power Vacuum was no exception. And uh, one of the things that we noticed after we had printed the prototypes, the one that Caleb had, that's not an actual game, that's a poster. Um, but the ones that I had that I sent off to um, various content creators for the Kickstarter, we, we play a lot of Power Vacuum during the development. And you know every morning, Caleb and I would get up and we'd play a little Power Vacuum and then go about our days. And uh, one of the things that we had noticed is the game was taking too short. It was not unusual once you've played a few games for the games to last only two rounds. And that just didn't feel long enough. Uh, and so we, um, we made a, a couple of small tweaks to try to make the the rounds last slightly longer. Um, there's a couple of little things you can do uh, in terms of the game clock to um, to tweak it with Power Vacuum. Uh, so that's a small minor thing, but actually has a big impact on your experience of the game um, overall. The, uh, the second thing that I wanted to address is some people had mentioned it's, um, Again, this might be getting too many in the weeds if you haven't actually played Power Vacuum yet, but um, one of the things is that I had noticed was that it is, um, pe people had, get, the feedback we had gotten is that tr taking tricks was not worth enough. As if for a trick taking game, it wasn't, it didn't feel advantageous enough to actually take tricks. And when that happens, it means that if you don't have, because in this, in Power Vacuum, you take, you manipulate the power between players to work towards your agenda with the low cards, which means if you have a hand of low cards, that's quite good. If you have a hand of only high cards, your chances of being able to manipulate the power board aren't great. And we initially had it where you could win a point for winning tricks, but one point isn't very much. On your agendas, you can win up to 10, uh, or sorry, up to 16 points. Um, so, you know, if there's only eight cards in hand and you can win a maximum of eight points, if you win every trick, it's still, that's, it's not nothing, but it's not like great if you have, if you were dealt kind of a, um, a poor hand. 
So Caleb and I worked a lot on that. And one of the things we came up with is, um, or Caleb came up with, full credit to him, is that when you win a trick, now you choose to take a point or to capture one of the cards that was played in the trick. And you play that and you're going to keep that for the next round. What's cool about this, it's a very small change. It's a minor, it's an additional rule, but it's a minor one. But it has a huge impact on the rest of the game because what happens now is if you have low cards, you want to be very careful about playing them and when to play them because you know that the other player, if they don't have low cards, is going to take them and they're going to use that card in the next round. So there are ways in which you can play low cards where you won't give them to the other players. So now you're thinking not just I'm going to play my low cards whenever I can, but you're thinking when should I play my low cards? I should be really careful about playing my low cards. Um, and when you have a hand of high cards, you're thinking, okay, it's not great for this round, but I'm going to build a hand for my next round that is killer. And so that really makes having a, a hand of high cards and winning tricks feel much more interesting and much more valuable. So those are, those are some examples of uh, a couple of the things we changed. There was one more thing that we changed. Oh, spies. Spies work slightly differently. You can now play spies anytime you want. And it initially was that they were their own suit. The black suit was its own suit. And it just was way easier um, after kind of a couple tests and a couple of iterations to say, you can play spies anytime. And what's cool about that is that they they just feel much more, they're just much more interesting and dynamic than they were before where they were their own suit. Sure, they were hidden, but apart from that, like with the back sides of the cards being hidden. And that's interesting, but now they're interesting on many more levels. So there's a preview Marcus into some of the changes we've made in the in the rules which we will play next week all right Claudia asks which game has been the most fun to draw thus far uh sorry Claudio not Claudia um that is a good question I mean the thing is that each of the games that I've done have been a real big step up in like I've it's been a big challenge. I've challenged myself quite significantly. Um, I've never drawn characters to this level of like characters with lots of clothes on for um, for power vacuum. I, you know, most of my uh, my previous games, both my previous games, the characters aren't wearing that many clothes. The bean people are usually like maybe they'll have a hat or like a scarf or something. But um, or like if it's very important that they're wearing particular shoes, then maybe they'll have you know they'll have some shoes on. But apart from that. They're not usually wearing clothes. So that has been a big challenge, but that wasn't your question. Your question was fun. What has been the most fun to draw? Um, there's lots of different types of art in each of the games too. Like there's icons is one thing. It's sure it's not really it art or is it just design? There are, um, uh, there's the actual art pieces that go on the cards. Like in Roll Camera, there's the scene cards. Those are quite fun because they're drawn to be more cinematic, which is more kind of my, like where my head usually is. Um, whereas the idea cards are drawn from this kind of odd above, kind of also almost isometric angle where the characters are very small. Um, and that's a very different, that's a very different um, requirement, like the, the art requirement for that. But that wasn't your question, Claudio. Your question is what was most fun um what i'm really i mean honestly just whatever i'm drawing right now is the most fun that's a stupid answer but that's what it's the truth like i really just have been enjoying um drawing power vacuum because it gives me an opportunity to, to really try color in a big way um and in a way that like previously with roll camera, I guess with roll camera, I also had colored, I had the colored scene cards and I had to coordinate that in a, in a specific way. But one of the criticisms I got of, from roll, of, about roll camera, this is probably because of the board um, in terms of the artwork was um, people didn't like, or I not people, but like, I don't know, I don't wanna speak for you and how you feel about roll camera if you've played it. But um, that the board seemed plain. There's a lot of white in the cards, like the idea cards and problem cards, there's a lot of white space. Um, and that's because at the time, I just hadn't had that much experience with um, decorative design. Like I could do characters and stuff, but designing like the card elements and so on is a very different challenge. And so um, I got a lot more practice on that, kind of learning by doing as I've been doing these. So 
Um, now I'm rambling. This isn't the thing. I'll tell you what the most fun is, the most fun game. It's a game that's not even out yet. My next game is called Almighty, and it's a game set in a world of ancient gods. And that, the colors on that are insane. You can see some of the, some of the, there's some preview stuff. There's a Facebook group for Almighty and also on our Discord, the Community Studio Discord, I'm often sharing when I have like art updates and stuff. And um, the, in terms of the the art part, like the technical art part is the the color of that that comes out in that game and the things that I have to that I have to draw, like drawing ancient, like drawing gods. Because in this game, you build a pantheon of ancient gods and, um, it's a it's a very heavy, I wouldn't say very heavy, but it is a heavier, much heavier game certainly than um, roll camera or, or power vacuum for that matter. Um, and there's a lot of art in that one. Like forty cards for power vacuum is nothing compared to the, what I'm gonna what I'm what I'm subjecting to myself for Almighty. Um, but it's been really really fun. It's been the funniest funniest to draw this one. Like this drawing makes me laugh, like the security. I just love the idea that in this world, they actually have to um, climb up the pole because they're not gonna mount. I guess I could. they could have like chairs or harnesses or something and sit up on this pole. But I love the absurdity of this universe, of the power vacuum universe is to me um, the funniest for sure. And it's fun to think of the different, the, like absurd situations that these characters uh, that this this world could be in. Uh, so that to me is fun and funniest. Thanks for thanks for the question. Keep being Discord. Yes, we have a. If you know Discord, the app, we have a Discord server. Um, you can find it on keenbean.studio/contact. There's a link there. Check it out. You're more than welcome. Uh, I, that's my that's my little uh, that's my little cozy home. It's where all the people get like the first updates. It's where all the the keenest beans come to um, to listen to what I'm uh like struggling with in the design or with art and so on i get a lot of feedback from people there i like post things i did this in power vacuum it was really helpful um marcus was there and probably some other ones of you were there too where um uh the i posted some initial concepts for power vacuum because it was really unclear for me initially how i was gonna present the art for this game what were the what were the cards gonna be were they gonna be like playing cards were they more abstract like with tried characters that were like, you know, like classic deck of cards where they're like in two directions, but that seemed boring. And so anyway, I posted a lot and got a lot of really great feedback on, on the Discord. I do that a lot. I've been doing it with Almighty recently as well. Eric, this is my brother, Kainga Games. He's called Kainga Games because he has a game called Kainga and it is fantastic. It's a video game. Eric is a video game designer and artist. He does the art as well in his game. So, um, are you going to do a Power Vacuum Itchy Feet tie-in? Itchy Feet is my webcomic, and it is also a card game that I have made. It was the first game I ever made. Um, I don't know. You know what? This reminds me that in Roll Camera, there is um, a bunch of, not a bunch of, there are two Easter Egg Itchy Feet characters in Roll Camera, and I haven't yet figured out where I'm going to put them in Power Vacuum. Uh, if I just put them right here, I guess that won't work. Hello. It's not really an Easter egg if he's like st <laughs> standing there. All right, get out of there. Uh, I'm not sure I to think about where to do a tie-in. Or did you mean like a card or like an actual component, not just an Easter egg? Claudio, you really like the way the roll camera looks, the contrast of the white and all the scenes is being built as you play. I thank you. That was the idea, was that it starts out plain and sort of fills up in color as the game goes on. Um, that was kind of how it went. But I do like the challenge, like basically with Almighty. Almighty, I have been working on from since before Power Vacuum. Power Vacuum came to me relatively recently, and it kind of just, Caleb brought it to me, and it was pretty close to being done, which is what was exciting and why I got to get it out of the door sooner, which is good because Almighty is very big and it has taken a long time and it will still take a, a good long time before it comes out. Um, but the, uh, I forgot where I was going with that. Anyway, thank you, I'm glad you like it. Ah, yes, uh, what I was gonna say is that Almighty is basically my reaction to that feedback about Roll Camera where people were like, I said, okay, you want, you, you said Roll Camera's plain, well, then I'm going in the complete opposite direction and it just like, 
Um, yeah, it says, uh, Claudia, you said you got to see all my up updates on Almighty. Oath, yes, uh, big, um, big influence for me. The art in Oath, I think, is bar none the finest art in, in board games. I think that that game, it's production, it's aesthetic, it's not just the art, it is the entire, like the entire presentation from the, the board to the cards to the meeples and everything. It is just 10 out of 10. It is it is perfect. The only the only other game that I consider a 10 out of 10 presentation is another Cold War the game, uh, Pax Premier, which is not the second edition, which is not um not a Kyle Farron drawn uh, production, but it is also in just in terms of its of its physical being, it is like a perfect game. But yes, Oath, big, big influence on uh Almighty and how I, you know, Oath taught me colors can be insane. Like you can do insane colors as long as you pick a few of them. So there are colors that are not in Oath at all. They just don't like blue, for example. That's not true. Blue is definitely in Oath. There is a color. Anyway, there's a like he he has a very specific color scheme that he uses. So yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Marcus. Discord is my own chorus. I'm the conductor of it. I'm not so much a conductor as I am a, um, I'm standing on the highest soapbox and everyone can shout at me and I shout at them. It's great. Claudio, the scroll board is a beautiful idea. Yes, this is for Almighty. We have a scroll board. Um, it feels like it gives the game so much more presence. Thank you. Uh, it's, it's great. I played it with a prototype of that in, as you probably saw in Discord, in, um, uh, this last week with Eric, my brother actually was there and everybody gave the scroll board rave reviews. And now I realized like, I, it has to stay. Kevin, the co my co-designer on Almighty and I have been considering maybe um, possibly getting rid of the scroll board in favor of moving some things around in the, and this was just, after we played it with this, we said, no, we can't, we can't get rid of the scroll board. It's too cool. It's too good. All right, back to the drawing. So yes, as I said, I like the idea that these guys you know, imagine you show up for work and they're like, okay, you're going to spend the next eight hours up here on this uh, pole. Uh, what did you say? On the pole, boss? Yeah, you heard me. I said on the pole. You get up there. Get up there and do your duty to the state. He's obviously the, um, the new guy. <laughs> Yeah, you're down in the pole. I'm up on the pole. I outrank you. I have one, two, three, four stripes on my collar to your paltry three. When you get your fourth stripe, when you get your fifth stripe, you can come talk to me about being on the pole above me. Gee, yeah, all right, fine. You can be higher on the pole. <laughs> Deja vu, we've been here before, but with thicker lines. Remember that? It's because I was distracted. Oops, see this? This um, lens. You know what I love about this world? Sorry, this, uh, I'm not going to get straight. This lens is in the way. And the problem is that I've chosen for this one, for, this, for the security camera characters, that they have only one eye in the... Um, like the, the lens is just one eye. Like this camera guy down here, this camera guy right here also has like two eyes. The old... Film cameras used to have multiple uh, lenses that you could like rotate around. That's why that thing is, looks like it's on a circle. Um, and actually they used to have three, but when I drew the camera, the film camera guy down here with three lenses, it looked really weird. So I just put two on. And this camera, the security camera has this camera, has, um, he's just got the one and then his other eye is over here for some reason. Well, the reason is, um, that on this other one here, I did this camera, this on a stakeout, I did the camera uh, 
with two eyes because I couldn't find another place to put his other eye. Like initially I thought, well, it's just going to be the one eyeball in the camera, but then I'm like, well, where's his other eye? And then I ran into the problem of like, well, this looks kind of like a pig snout if you have two little eyes on the lens. Anyway, I'll worry about that problem later. Point is, this guy is just the one. Could make it binoculars. In the stakeout car, I could. In fact, that was my initial idea, but binoculars don't need power. I mean, I guess old cameras were like windy. You didn't need power for them either. But we, Caleb and I decided <laughs> for coherence sake, in which there, like I said, there's not much coherence in this world, but like for the world to work even a little bit, the, um, that like the, and for the theme of the game to work, that all the people appliances have to be powered. They have to be like something that requires, or at least, in theory requires uh, power. A telephone doesn't require much power and we looked into it. And even the old, those old, the old like rotary phones, the phone cable was also delivering power to those, to rotary phones. So they were actually powered by, but they're powered by the phone cable. It wasn't just a like data line. I didn't know that. Um, the left eye is like a red blinker. Yeah, that's kind of what I was going for. It's like you've got the lens and then you've got the, the red, the red light tells you he's turned on all right to climb a big pole. This is a family show. All right. Um, Dave asks, are you going to go, are you going to power vacuum ready for Gen Con? We will be demoing power vacuum at Gen Con and we should by that point, Gen Con is July. By that point, we should have production copies to demo as well. Um, they won't be available to sell. We won't be able to get it pr printed and shipped in time for Gen Con, but my, and it possibly also not Essen. I know that, all right, between you and me, don't spread this around. I would really like to get Power Vacuum ready for, for Essen, like to be available and like shipped by Essen, which is Essen Spiel is, the, is in October. Um, it's gonna, and that sounds like a long way from now. It really is not. There's a crisis in the Red Sea, don't you know? And this is causing a lot of, um, problems for freight and cargo. So I'm going to do my best. I can't promise it. That's why it's not on the campaign page um, because any number of things go wrong. If I don't finish this art, for example, on time, then we won't make it for Essen. Um, but certainly, unfortunately, you cannot make it for Gen Con. But if you sign up for demos of Power Vacuum, I am going to be there. Caleb's going to be there as well. We're flying over from Europe and um, we're joining up with the Grand Gamers Guild booth, um, who's my Roll Camera US um, partner, um, publishing partner, Grand Gamers Guild. We're gonna be their booth at Gen Con and we're gonna demo Power Vacuum there. Um, so if you sign up there, you we will get you will get to play a production version of it, but they won't be available to pick up or for sale, unfortunately. Good questions, everyone. This is fun. Glad we're doing this. Uh, all right. Mm. <laughs> Marcus. Now the pole at the top right line is very wobbly. That is true. But you know what? I kind of like the wobbly lines. I like well, this one I decided for reasons unrelated that I don't like it. I'm going to redo it, but I don't want to do a completely straight line. You know, I could do this. So um, Procreate has this great feature where you can literally just create, if you hold down the pencil, you can create these straight lines. And to me, they just look a little sterile. It doesn't look as, I like, part of the reason Roll Camera has this kind of crazy aesthetic where it looks like everything's been drawn by hand. It's because it was. Everything on that game, every line of graphic design, everything was all drawn I mean, by hand on this tablet. But I drew it. I, I, the aesthetic I was going for was that it looked like a game that had been handmade, that it looked like it had been made by a person and not by a computer or not generated or not by a team. You know, It looked like something that I had drawn because I, that's exactly what happened. And so I kind of like um, lines that aren't 
totally straight because it reminds you just even if you're not thinking about it consciously it just reminds you when you're seeing it like oh yes a person made this and like that's a little wobbly but um you know obviously there's a there's a limit to how janky something can look but i don't want it to look too um, too perfect um marcus do you approve this this line i just want to get your sign off on this please marcus this line is it good let me know that's the marcus line you get one line marcus and that's that's your line you get to decide if that line is correct or not i'll do another draft of the line if you want you decide that's good all right we got the marcus sign off on the line every stream marcus gets one line he gets to police that was the one uh right and this lady say uh, this one is the only character so far that i've drawn for power vacuum where it's not clear what appliance they are uh eric do you get a line eric do i get a line e yes you get a line do you want it now um so i don't know the reason I don't know that it matters if it's clear if it's if she's an appliance is because she's got that like babushka head thing on and i couldn't think of an appliance that would look obvious i mean i guess i could just kind of draw her sort of squarish you know like we can kind of see that this that's what i've been doing so far is like if the, it's unclear what the what type of um appliance it's supposed to be it's just sort of square and then you're meant to draw your own you know go to your own conclusions about what what it is exactly you could do that it's called tv that was too big eyes are too big sometimes the great thing about having this like cartoon style and not going for something more realistic especially in the facial expressions is that you you only really need like two dots in a line to really be really expressive, you know, like this. <laughs> it's a totally different expression than like that. Um, so maybe it's okay that you're not really sure. Should she be wary? Oh, great. These guys again. <laughs> Uh, Marcus says, this must be a poor quality appliance or an old appliance. Yeah, it could be. Or Sam suggests a TV, like an old, small arcade. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I also don't know, does it matter? Should I worry about it? I'm not sure. You can, should she have like wrinkles? Like she's literally like an old lady, like old wrinkled TV appliance. No, she looks kind of like a cat. Meow. <laughs> and then here, look, she's got. She looks like the kid from um, Where the Wild Things Are. All right, Sam approves of the concerned look. <laughs> uh, so we'll stick with that, I suppose. And then here I can give her a bit of a square like back here, you know, so who knows? Maybe there's just got something. Uh, clothes are tricky. I looked up at a lot of photos of like USSR regular life, like just normal life in the USSR or like behind the Iron Curtain in various countries and a lot of frumpy outfits. A lot of... Uh, a lot of plain colors and loose fabrics, I'll tell you that. Not so many, not much high fashion happening behind the Iron Curtain. And here we got to kind of see Uh, use the wrong eraser right here 
Yeah. Got her shopping. This looks like a bit of a, like a cheerleader skirt, doesn't it? That's not right. Well, I don't know. It's also not terrible. They all have these, uh, these like kind of house shoe things, the women. Ugh, these guys again. I love it. Yeah, I looked up a lot of reference photos from, uh, but I didn't just want it to be USSR. I mean, I know Power Vacuum, like the, a lot of it is very clearly directly inspired by um, Soviet Union, Soviet Russia, but I, you know, because the, the whole like death of Stalin reference, but um I didn't want to just, I don't want it to be so one-to-one, -one, which is why each of the main characters, each of the main player characters in Power Vacuum is a, based on a different, kind of inspired by a different uh, autocratic regime or part of the world. So the, um, the, uh, the toaster is obviously um, a general and that was meant to be kind of more like uh, South American, like junta type, you know, military um, government, like South, Central South American type, um, with sunglasses. Except he doesn't, he doesn't have them. Uh, the iron is meant to be a, a like a bureaucrat, oligarch type person, Soviet one. The telephone is supposed to be a based on Maoist um, sort of Mao communist uh, outfits that they had, which like Chairman Mao, like the green. That's also with the color, like this. This green is kind of inspired by that. Um, that sort of off, sort of pale green of the of that regime, and who else is there? The black TV. Yeah, that one's a nice suit and tie. I mean, a lot of, you know, a lot of autocratic regimes are run by people in suits and ties. Um, but I didn't want it to be just so quite one-to-one. -one. So that's why I didn't uh, have any... It's like these little, like, little details like this often make an image. Just a couple of little, like, oh, there's some kind of, kind of garbage on the ground here. That looks like a butterfly. But it helps sell the, you, know, you look at a lot of those photos. Like this is before they had street cleaning machines, obviously. So, you know, you have people out there hand sweeping. The streets are going to be a lot grubbier um, than, than they are now. It's just, it was a dirtier time. What can you say? And here I'm intentionally making the lines a bit wobblier because they're supposed to look kind of like old stone, not quite so um, like direct and straight. Like these are, you know, uh, everything's a little bit, we got a little bit of, and I could like, I consider I could do like a trash can here or like a, um, I don't know, I could put maybe another box or a bill or maybe more people, but you know, sometimes um, the, I find that like art, the, at least for my style, like the busier I, the, the, a drawing becomes, the the less focused it, it becomes and the more it distracting. Um, I don't know why that is. I, I haven't yet found a way to draw busy images that don't feel overwhelming and like unfocused. And so for me, like keeping it here. And then obviously when the shading comes in, that's where it really will pull the image into focus on these two, these two clowns up here. Maybe I will. Maybe I will put like a garbage garbage can or something there. All right, we're almost done with our hour. Um, thanks, Sam. This is a very kind comment. Theming worlds feel about the money. So, fun fact: the world and the name came first. So, I had uh, what happened was I saw the movie. I happened to see in the same week. I saw the movie The Death of Stalin. It's a dark comedy came out five years ago with Steve Buscemi 
Um, and um, who's the guy? The, the the Malfoy's dad actor from Harry Potter. Um, Jason Isaacs plays the military guy. Uh, it's a great film. I happened to see that the same week that I saw The Dark Crystal, the 80s Muppet movie, if you remember that one. And it happened to be that the... Um, I realized like, oh, these films are actually about the same thing. Like these films are both about when, a, like in terms of the Skeksis, the like evil guys in the in the Dark Crystal, the emperor dies. And then it's all about like a power struggle between these like high ministers, like who's going to be the next one to take the emperor's position. And Death of Stalin's about the exact same thing. They're both about the same thing. I thought like, ah, oh, that'd be really fun to have a game where you are not quite sure because sometimes they're working together, but they're working against each other, but they're working kind of in tandem, but they know that the other person wants to get ahead. So it's this like mutual distrust feeling. Um, and I, I didn't, I hadn't seen that in a game before. Like traditionally in games, you either are on someone's team or you're not on someone's team. And sure, there's like hidden role games. There's games like Nemesis or uh, Battlestar Galactica where you are unsure about people's um, uh, like who they are, like it's a it's a social deduction. And that's not quite what I was trying to capture. Like what's captured in these movies is it, there's no deduction about it. Like they know that they're against each other and yet they still have to work together. And that feeling was what I wanted Power Vacuum to capture. And so that, and then when I thought of the title Power Vacuum, which is what it is, it's, you know, that's the, what happens when you lose a leader and then there's this vacuum of everybody trying to come in to be the next one to fill it. And uh, the um, when I had that title, I was like, oh, vacuum cleaner, obviously. And then the world of appliances, it just made it funny. And I think for me, I can't really move forward on a project until I see the humor in it. Like I see the, the joke. So thanks, Sam. I'm glad that was kind of where it started, where it all started. And, and Caleb too was a big uh, fan of that concept and that title. I put together first few drafts of Power Vacuum, the game that didn't end up having anything to do with what he, um, with what he came up with, but uh, he, he was always the one being like, "Oh, come on! This is a perfect game. This is a perfect name. Like a great title. Like you got a winner, Mal. You got to you got to make power vacuum. You got to make that." And I never, I didn't manage to do it, but he did. It all, all's well that ends well. I'm gonna put a few more lines in here just to show that this, you know, this poll has been around the block. There we go. Um, did I do everything? I think so. Yeah, pretty good. All right, that brings us to our hour. I want to thank everybody. I sure hope that, uh, I mean, we were a bit distracted here, but I'm just thinking like, oh man, if I have to, if each of these pieces, are, if each of these cards takes me an hour to do, I'm in trouble, but no, it's fine. Um, usually I'm much faster than that listen to some podcasts or something and, and do my art. And I still have to shade this. Um, so the next step that I would do uh, would be, I would borrow the color here from this from this here. And I will um, just give you a bit of a preview. I'll go in and fill in these, um, all the objects here. Uh, you know, sometimes I'll just come in with a rough brush and then I will add the shading. Like once they've been, once there is a layer of color as a base, um, for example, like this. Then I'll come in, how do I do it here? Just wanna check. Yeah, this 50%. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll take this color. It's like dark color. Goes back at 50. Create a new layer up here. Grab this other more rough brush, and then this will be my my shading shading brush. She's got her little hood there. Yeah, that's that's what I'll do to add the add the shading and then like her. Yeah, so on. There you go, and then it's uh, pretty much done. 
All right, well, um, oh heck, Eric wants me to do the color. Marcus says it was too short. Fine, let's finish the card. That's what we're here for, right? Uh, I won't leave just yet. All right, I had an hour, but you know what? What's the, what do we gotta wait for? Okay, here is the line color, so. First thing I'll do, I'll take away this sketch. We'll put in the green, and we're gonna fill this all in. It is the weekend. That's right, Marcus. It is the weekend. Let's take it easy. Um, and by take it easy, I mean I'm still working. I'm here working. <laughs> But uh, it'll feel good to get it done, get another card in the can completely. What I've been doing is doing all the sketches first, or at least doing like a bunch of sketches first, and then doing a bunch of um, uh, doing the, and then I have my idea is to like do a bunch of inking and then a bunch of coloring and so on, or at least do them in batches. So I'm not sure that I would do each card, finish it, and then like go and just start the next card, completely finish it, and so on. It might take a bit too long for my taste. It's kind of nice to once you get in a rhythm, it's nice to just just do that and stick with it, and not um, have to like go back and forth between different styles, different stages. You can kind of you know assembly line it a little bit. It helps me anyway. But you know, if you, again, if you do one stage for too long, like this part's really, really, I love this part, like filling in all of the, so satisfying. I literally just have to like drag over the, um, you can see the color I'm dragging over here. I just fill in these spots, it's so nice, so nice. And then it really starts to come alive and starts to feel like, uh, like its own thing. Um, Eric said he really likes Marcus's cat picture on his profile pic. I have to admit, it's a sweet pic. Sweet pic, Mike, Marcus. Looks like something that was created, like, it, these days you'd be like, oh, that's AI generated. But it looks to me like a like an image that was not, it was like painted, like actually painted. But maybe, maybe not. AI is getting pretty good these days. These dang robots. I'm not a huge fan of AI art, but I also, I mean, you know, obviously being an artist, and this is kind of one of my, it's kind of my thing is drawing. Um, I'm also not, um, not an idealist. I think these things, kind of inevitable or at least it's gonna take over but if we can resist it a little while longer i'm okay with that mm. all right let's see this is shading shading is tricky it's all like a lot of um i guess work in a way like sort of I'm not, like I said, I'm not a, you know, I'm not a classically trained artist. So I, a lot of stuff for me is like, does this look like that it's actually being shaded that way? Yeah, sure. Enough. Um, all right, that's that. Now we've already drawn it this way. Or we've already um, shaded it this way, which means the light, we have a light source, right? Coming in from this side. So the problem with that is it's going to throw this character completely into shade here, which I'm not a huge fan of because I want to see the face, you know, so I might cheat a little bit. If you don't tell anyone, I might just do this. And that way you can tell because he's got a little shade, right? A little like, um, like a visor. And then... 
this part as well, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. I think a little shape underneath the lens. So much of this is just for me, just trial and error. Uh, yeah, and I'll do this to just mix this, um, this like bar right here look like it's raised up if you put a little shade just just behind it then it looks like it's got a little more dimensionality to it which i like uh -huh. and then this like arm is casting a shadow over his whole oh this pole is also going to be casting a shadow isn't it All right, let's do the pole marcus's line here uh I mean, more than that, yeah. Let's go dramatic. More shadow. No, that's too much. Yeah, that could work. But now, see, the shadow has to come from here. And it's going to throw shadow over. Is this going to throw like a pole shadow over his hole? Uh, and then that's going to need to be a shadow too, right? Like this whole pole is going to be. Hmm, maybe not. Maybe this is like a daytime. There's a bit of diffused lighting, not like a nighttime where there's like a stark single light source. Um, yeah, exactly. Marcus, is this daytime or nighttime? I think it's daytime. Because otherwise you wouldn't have little old ladies like walking around in the streets at night. I don't know. It's kind of my feeling in this world. some of these comments um curious about how the title will be translated to spanish vacuum is vacio and aspiradora both of the word meanings used for the pun in english really so claudia what is power vacuum like that concept what is that in spanish uh oh aspiradora also re reference aspirar as in somebody who aspires or hopes to achieve power Hmm. That's good. I think there's something there. I think somebody, you know, a native tongue speaker with a with an aptitude for puns will come up with a good Spanish title. I've been thinking about this for German too. I mean, I might, I'm not a native language speaker, but um, Kraft is like the way it was described to me when I was um, teaching uh, power vacuum at last Essen when I was talking about like, okay, this is the power tokens like power, macht is power in terms of the like the power to do something, but like strom is power for like electricity. And the way the, the word that was told for, for me was kraft, as in kraftwerk, you know, the power plant basically. And kraft also means strength. So I think there's something there. Like if there are multiple language um, versions of this game, it's going to have to, the locals are going to have to be clever with that title because I'm not sure. How it would, how it would work. Roll camera didn't translate, for example. The German version of roll camera is just called roll camera. And in the French one is Saturn, which is kind of I guess Tourn. I don't know. My French isn't so great, but like it's the it's the term they use in filmmaking for like it's roll roll the cameras, but it also has a bit of a rolling. I don't know, Tourn. I don't know. French speakers will have to correct me on that. But um Power Vacuum translates to Vacio de Poder. There you go. I think that's that could work. Not sure. Um, Eric says, if they're hanging from a light bulb, the shadow would be below. It could be easier. Yeah, I think. Ah, maybe it is a light pole that they're hanging from. Ah, and then the light's coming from above. Then all I have to do, it would make sense for her light too. Let's do that. Way with you. False lighting. All right, and then we just have to have it like it's coming from above. This could work. This might be the solution. So he would still have here, he would still be casting a shadow here, maybe a little bit of a, oh, dang it, wrong brush. A little bit of a line. He would still be making this little visor visor lines. Actually, I didn't have to delete all this stuff, did I? What an idiot. Idiot. OK. 
Okay. These are all the same. And then here we've got a shadow in here on his fingers. Under here. Here he's just got a little shadow from his thumb. And then he, from here, basically, this is a complicated, I mean, this is, <laughs> look at this posture. I can't believe, sometimes like the simplest postures are really hard to draw and the most, this one I was really dreading. So I was like, how am I gonna draw this guy scrambling up here? And then actually it turns out to be really easy to draw. Uh, for some reason, I don't know why, this, this was really, this one went really quick. It's not always the case. Maybe I'll just do that. Just all shadow. Mm, oops. Yeah, it's okay. Or here. No, it's too much. Just a little light. A little, you don't. You just need a suggestion of shadow. Often, you don't need like a full. Okay. Same thing here, he's... Maybe not quite so extreme. A lot less like zooming in and out in this, this part of the, the drawing. It's also a little less interesting maybe, I don't know, you tell me, you tell me. This is looking pretty, pretty good, I think. This is a good idea, Eric, slash Marcus. Let's get a little shadow there to give it a raised. No, that's not there. This is a bit more for the foot. Kicking him. Ugh. Dude, come on. Rookies always have to take the take crap, don't they? Okay. Uh, that's covered there. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Then I can do this here, this down here, and that there. Yeah, it looks all right, I think. This can be here, we can shade this part of the curve. We got a little digging in here. Shade these guys here and we'll do like a little bit on a little 11. There we have it. Do we? Hmm. Yeah. So this is the part of the drawing where I just like look at it. Um, should the ground shadow in the ground not be bigger? <sighs> maybe, maybe I'll raise it up a bit. Do a little like show like oh, it's these guys. The problem is then this is not shadowed, which is weird. Lower this brush size. Let's see what we can do about it. You know, like, shouldn't this all be shadowed then? I don't like that either. 
So I think actually, even though it's less realistic, I think this. Bottom of pant leg. Yeah, there. I think actually this is this is fine. It's not super realistic, but I think it's better for the just clarity. Oops, a little got away from us there. All right, now what I haven't done. Light pole has a wide range. The shadow would spread. Yeah, exactly. It would. Uh, it's like diffusing over everything. I mean, yeah, it's not. It's not perfect, but it's fine. I think the important thing is to draw attention to the guys that are here on the, on the thing. The one um, thing that's missing now is the, uh, is the background. So I'm going to do like a background. So like normally in these other ones, as you can see. Well, let's take the stamp for an example. Here I have this um, this like kind of tile pattern that's in the background. And it's just to give a bit of depth and a bit of separation from the background. So it's not just the background isn't just a sort of blank. And I'm going to do that here. I won't do it right now because it requires a bit more in depth. I have to look up some buildings and stuff, but it'll be something like, you know, the other side of the street. And it'll be quite roughly done something like this and then I'll go in with an eraser and kind of erase out the, the lines of the street and you know add doors and windows and so on and it'll it'll kind of fade into the back like this so it won't be quite so clear but it'll it'll pull it together I think all right thank you everyone uh Really, really fun to do this live stream draw session. I can't wait to show you some of these other cards. They're great. It's going to be a really fun bunch of art on these cards, and I think a real, um, a real collaborative effort on us on our part as well. It's been super fun reading your card art ideas in the spreadsheet and and taking inspiration from them. So, thank you, everyone. Especially Sam, Marcus, Eric, and Caleb for coming by and uh, leaving lots of comments, and Claudio, of course, and um, and everyone else who watches this in the future. You, I didn't miss you. I didn't forget you. I mean, and uh, and uh, have a great Saturday. And let's uh, talk on Monday when it's time for our next vote for the uh, for the next component upgrade. All right, that's it for me. I'm starting to lose my mind. I will see you on the other side. Bye.